Okay, so now that you understand a little bit more about how you create multi-layered cloth inside of cloth effects, um, I'm going to take it to the practical example level and, and put it on a, a character here. I'm going to build a tank top, a pair of pants, and an overcoat for this character. And as you guys have bared with me in terms of placing panels through Garment Maker throughout this entire DVD, I'm going to spare you that drudgery uh, in this one for the most part. The top coat is a little bit of an interesting uh, uh, animal, and I'm going to, to show you a little bit more about it. Uh, however, to begin with, uh, the first thing that I want to mention is you'll notice here that I've got this tank top pattern already placed with Garment Maker, and that right here I've got the original pattern. This again is a reference object of this spline, so uh, just to, to kind of reiterate some of the techniques that we've talked about throughout this DVD, make, get in the habit when you're designing clothing like this to use the reference so that you can always go back and tweak the size and the, the tailor and the fit from this original pattern and still be able to uh, make it fit on the character. Uh, you'll be happy, you'll, you'll save a lot of time, it, it tends to be a, a much easier process at that point. So I'm going to go ahead and hide this guy right here because I don't need him. Basically I've got my uh, my garment and of course this character, let's actually back out here real quick, has a has a fairly significant motion to him. He runs and he hits the brakes at the very end. So. You'll notice that over the first 30 frames within Biped, I actually have this character moving into his initial start-run position, and then he takes off. And so this is the motion that we're going to create with multiple, multiple levels of clothing. So, first thing to do is add cloth effects to the shirt. Now, when you're building multi-layers of clothing for your characters, again, just like you did with the simple example, work from the inside out. So I know that the shirt is going to be tucked inside the pants, so I'm going to build the shirt first. So in this case, let's go into the object properties. The reference is going to be cloth. I'm going to add my generic man, and I'm going to you know, keep this pretty much the same as it was before. Turn off gravity, make sure it's off. Self collision is on. Use sewing springs is on and I'm going to simulate local damped to pull the pattern together on my character. Now, once I get it pretty much the way I want it, I'll go ahead and stop that, and I'll turn gravity on, I'm going to turn use sewing springs off, I'm going to hit simulate local real quick so it snaps everything together, there we go, and I'm going to stop it again because knowing that the pant, the shirt is going to be tucked inside the pants, you know, I don't want it necessarily just kind of draping down. I want it to kind of hug the, the body, and I don't want it to actually move underneath the pants. So in this case, what I'm going to do is go into cloth effects, create a group. Let's go into front viewport, and in this case, I'm going to go into wireframe, so I can select the vertices that I want to keep or I want to have kind of adhere to the body. So I'm going to select all those, hit make group and call it shirt tails, say OK. And what I want it to do is affix to the surface and I'm going to select the generic man. So he's now assigned. And what's more is I want these vertices to kind of suck in um, so that they're not necessarily um, in their current position. They're going to shrink. And so you do that through the U and the V scale. Let's go to 0.875, so 87.5% of what they would normally be. And I'll get out of here. And now that that's set, Let's go ahead and hit Simulate Local, and you'll notice the shirt comes down and forms kind of that, that poof that you would expect around the edges of, a pant, of the pants line, and it tends to adhere to the actual object itself. You get this, you don't really have to worry about it, because it's not, not important, and in fact, 
I could even at this point do a mesh select with faces and select pretty much all of these. Maybe add a few more to them because I'm not going to see them. And then on top of it, do a delete mesh so that I don't have to worry about them at all because the pant line, the, you know, the pants are going to come right up through here. Eh, you know, either way, doesn't make any difference. They're going to be hidden. You don't have to worry about them. So now it's a matter of going through the simulation process and just literally running this through the cloth effect simulation. So in this case, let's go ahead and delete that and delete that because I don't need it right now. And the other thing is, is that that group, I could also make another group if I wanted to and have it no collide to speed the simulation up. Probably not a bad idea. So what I'm going to do is, instead of boring you with the simulation here, is I'm going to pause here while it runs and then I'll be right back. Okay, so that part of the simulation is now officially done. You can see I get some nice motion, some nice stretch. It's a fairly form-fitting kind of uh, vest tunic, as it were. And so now I'm ready to move on to my next stage, which is going to be the pants that are going to work around it. So in this case, I'll unhide those, and again, as I did previously, I have the original pattern as a standard line, and then this one is a reference of that original one, so that again I can tweak the pants if I need to, and uh, is, as I said, a very important habit to get into. Now, when it comes to adding the pants to the existing simulation, you don't want to click cloth effects and add a whole separate cloth modifier to this. Now you're going to have two different simulations. You know, if you're going to have this as a collision object, it's going to start gathering up multiple cloth modifiers, and that's a really bad thing. You do not want to do that um, under any circumstances. So what you want to do is actually select an object that's already part of the simulation you want to add the pants to. And in this case, we go to Object Properties, Add Object, pants ref. Pants are going to be cloth. And then what I do with my tank top is I change it from cloth to a collision object. And what happens is that when I hit OK, the simulation, the simulated frames goes back to one, goes back to frame one, and a lot of users go, <gasps> I've lost it all, I'm going to have to start over. No, that's not the case. That data is preserved. The the vertex information, all of that is, is put into that mesh to be used as a collision object. If you wanted to get rid of it, you could click the delete object cache. If you wanted to point cache that data out and then delete it and get rid of it so that you don't have to worry about cloth being run on this, not a problem. But considering it's a collision object, it's not going to be acting as a, um, as a cloth object any longer in this simulation. Now, Right now I've select, I have my generic man selected, and if I started trying to, to mess with the pants, I might have some problems. So again, you select the object that you're working on as cloth. That's the next step. So now I've got these pants, and I can pretty much go through as I would um, anything else. Sewing Springs is turned on, and I'll hit Simulate Local. <laughs> 